Quintet all senior high school learners of Kalangitan High School. I'm your Sir Mel Santos, and welcome to another home study session in 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. Now have your paper and pen handy for note-taking along with your self-learning module as we are about to engage in another literary adventure. So set your mind and heart, have yourselves feeling at ease and focused to get the most out of learning from today's topic. So this is the last of the seven-part series of virtual learning for our topic 21st century literary traditions and forms from different cultures. And this episode will be about the literary movements in American literature. So again, let's keep in mind our learning goals for the entire seven-part series of this virtual learning. Identify the 21st century literary traditions and forms of different cultures, notably American literature for this episode. Distinguish the differences of these 21st century literary traditions and forms of different cultures from their established or classical literary conventions. Appreciate the 21st century literary developments of different cultures. So mga kaheven, let's get started to roll. Like other national literatures, American literature was shaped by the history of the country that produced it. For almost a century and a half, America was merely a group of colonies scattered along the eastern seaboard of the North American continent. These are the 13 colonies, also known as the 13 British colonies or the 13 American colonies. They were a group of British colonies on the Atlantic coast of North America. Founded in the 17th and 18th centuries, they began fighting the American Revolutionary War in April 1775 and formed the United States of America by declaring full independence in July 1776. The history of American literature begins with the arrival of English-speaking Europeans in the 17th century in what would become the United States. At first, American literature was naturally a colonial literature by authors who were Englishmen and who thought and wrote as such. John Smith, a soldier of fortune who wrote in the tradition of geographic literature, initiated American literature. His chief books included A True Relation of Virginia in 1608 and The General History of Virginia, New England, and The Summer Isles in 1624. All 17th century American writings were in the manner of British writings of the same period. Notable prose writers of typical day or everyday topics include Richard Mather and Roger Williams. Anne Bradsheet was well known for poetry during this time. She was the first woman to be recognized as an accomplished New World poet. Her volume of poetry, The Tenth Muse, lately sprung up in America, received considerable favorable attention when it was first published in London in 1650. Both the content and form of the literature of the 17th century in America were markedly English. Next is the 18th century American literature. Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Ray were the early essayists during the 18th century post-American Revolutionary War period, which represented the historical discussion of government, organization, and Republican values. Thomas Jefferson was a notable literary figure during this time when he wrote the United States Declaration of Independence. His influence on the Constitution and the mass of his letters had led him being considered one of the most talented early American writers. William Hill Brown's Power of Sympathy in 1789 was noted to be the first American novel. 
Much of the early literature of the new nation struggled to find a uniquely American voice. 19th century American literature was marked with the emergence of literary movements, including Romanticism, Transcendentalism, Dark Romanticism, Gothic fiction, slave narratives, and literary realism. So again, these are called literary movements, which help categorize authors and literary works that share similar philosophies, aesthetics, or topics. Literary movements divide literary works into groups based on their similarities, as opposed to grouping them by period or genre. Some movements are defined by the authors themselves, while others are defined decades or even centuries later. All right, let's begin exploring the first of literary movements to emerge in the 19th century American literature called the Romanticism. Even when Romanticism originated in English literature, American literature would see its own Romantic period flourish in the early 19th century. In the grand scope of American literature, American Romanticism was the first real literary movement to ever occur within the United States. In fact, the Romantic era in the United States, which started in the 19th century, was largely known as the American Renaissance because it was around this time that American writers and artists began searching for a distinctly American voice separate from that of their British and European counterparts. Again, as previously discussed, the key feature of Romanticism was the emphasis laid on individual thought and personal feeling. Just a few decades after the American Revolution and in the wake of the War of 1812, the country found itself in a place of newly acquired freedom and at the face of an ending possibility. This led to a bursting of creativity and artistic development spanning from the early to mid-1800s. Emily Dickinson was a popular poet from this time period whose works explored humanity's relationship to nature and mortality. Nathaniel Hawthorne, another American romantic, wrote the wildly popular novel The Scarlet Letter in 1850, which criticized Puritanism and influenced American culture. The idea of sin and punishment is the main theme of the novel and how Hester Prynne, the main character, has been punished for her sin of adultery. The novel is set in a village in Puritan New England. The main character is Hester Prynne, a young woman who has born a child out of wedlock. Hester believes herself a widow, but her husband Roger Chillingworth arrives in New England very much alive and conceals his identity. He finds his wife and forces her to wear the scarlet letter A on her dress as punishment for her adultery. So apparently the letter A stands for adultery. After Hester refuses to name her lover, Chillingworth becomes obsessed with finding his identity. When he learns that the man in question is Arthur Dimsdale, a saintly young minister, Chillingworth proceeds to torture him. Stricken by guilt, Dimsdale becomes increasingly ill. Hester herself revealed to be a self-reliant heroine who is never truly repentant for committing adultery with the minister. She feels that their act was blessed by their deep love for each other. Although she is initially ridiculed, over time, her compassion and dignity silence many of her critics. In the end, Chillingworth is morally degraded by his monomaniacal pursuit of revenge. Dimsdale is broken by his own sense of guilt, and he publicly confesses his adultery before dying in Hester's arms. Only Hester can face the future bravely as she prepares to begin a new life with her daughter Pearl in Europe. Years later, Hester returned to New England, where she continues to wear the scarlet letter. After her death, she is buried next to Dimsdale, and their joint tombstone is inscribed with, on a field sable, the letter A gules. So in the inscription, the word sable means black, and gules means reddish. So it can be directly translated as the field is black, and the letter A is reddish. Other formative works from this era include Moby Dick by Herman Melville and Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Next is Transcendentalism. 
A core belief in transcendentalism is the inherent goodness of people and nature. And while society and its institutions have corrupted the purity of the individual, people are at their best when truly self-reliant and independent. Ralph Waldo Emerson was the figurehead of this movement of valuing self-reliance and independence through his literary works. Ralph Waldo Emerson was an American essayist, lecturer, and philosopher. Emerson's literary works that reflect transcendentalism include the well-known essays Self-Reliance, The Oversoul, Circles, The Poet, and Experience. These essays made the decade from the mid-1830s to the mid-1840s Emerson's most fertile period. Next to be discussed are Dark Romanticism and Gothic Fiction. The works of Edgar Allan Poe manifested a dark version of Romanticism. It was said that his unique take of Romanticism was a reaction against Transcendentalism, which finds man and nature as inherently good. In Edgar Allan Poe's version of Romanticism, which was coined as Dark Romanticism, it finds man inherently sinful and self-destructive and its nature a dark, mysterious force. The seeming ideology of Edgar Allan Poe was what gave birth to his Gothic fictional works. Edgar Allan Poe's Gothic fiction combines themes of dark romanticism with science fiction, horror, and violence. Edgar Allan Poe is popularly known for his narrative poem entitled The Raven, which was first published in 1845. The poem is often noted for its musicality, stylized language, and supernatural atmosphere. It tells of a talking raven's mysterious visit to a distraught lover, tracing the man's slow descent into madness. The lover, often identified as a student, is lamenting the loss of his love, Lenore. The blackbird talking raven seems to further distress the protagonist with its constant repetition of the word, nevermore. At one point, the narrator becomes angry, calling the raven a thing of evil and a prophet. Finally, he asks the raven whether he will be reunited with Lenore in heaven. When the raven responds with its typical nevermore, he is enraged and calling the bird a liar, commands it to leave, but it does not move. Finally, the narrator tells us that the raven has continued to sit atop his chamber door above the bust of Pallas and that he will live forever in its shadow. To modern commentators, Poe remains best known for his short stories, almost all of which were collected in three volumes published during his lifetime, including Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque, The Prose Romances of Edgar A. Poe, and Tales by Edgar A. Poe. Many scholars divide Poe's short fiction into two categories, horror tales and detective stories. Poe's horror tales typically revolve around characters who have reached states of extreme alienation, terror, and madness, and often contain elements of the supernatural. And we are still under 19th century milestone of American literature. And slave narrative literary movement also emerged during this time. Slave narrative is an account of the life or a major portion of the life of a fugitive or former slave, either written or orally related by the slave personally. Slave narratives comprise one of the most influential traditions in American literature, shaping the form and themes of some of the most celebrated and controversial writing both in fiction and in autobiography in the history of the United States. The vast majority of American slave narratives were authored by African Americans, but African-born Muslims who wrote in Arabic, the Cuban poet Juan Francisco Manzano, and a handful of white American sailors taken captive by North African pirates also penned narratives of their enslavement during the 19th century. The last literary movement to be discussed to emerge in the 19th century American literature is literary realism. Literary realism also started to emerge in the 19th century. Literary realism represents reality by portraying mundane, everyday experiences as they are in real life. Realist works depict familiar people, places, and stories. 
primarily about the middle and lower classes of society. Literary realism seeks to tell a story as truthfully as possible instead of dramatizing or romanticizing it. American realism became an important tendency in visual art. Whether a cultural portrayal or a scenic view of a downtown New York City, American realist works attempted to define what was real. Popular authors that helped define this movement include John Steinbeck, Upton Sinclair, Jack London, Edith Wharton, Frank Norris, and Mark Twain. Mark Twain is also regarded as classical figure of humor in American literature. He was lauded as the greatest humorist the United States has produced, and William Faulkner called him the father of American literature. His novels include The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, published in 1876, and its sequel, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, published in 1884, which was often called The Great American Novel. And we are now down to the 20th century American literature. The literary movements, including literary modernism and Harlem Renaissance, defined the 20th century American literature. Around late 19th century to early 20th century, literary modernism started to emerge in American literature, which is characterized by a self-conscious break with traditional ways of writing in both poetry and prose fiction writing. Notable figure during this time was William Faulkner for prose writing. He was known for his experimental style with meticulous attention to diction and cadence. His most famous novel is The Sound and the Fury, employed several narrative styles including stream of consciousness. So you already know what stream of consciousness, right? Again, it's like a narration technique wherein we could hear the character speak through his mind which we have pretty much discussed in our previous modules. All right, another important figure for American literary modernism is Ezra Pound. Ezra Pound was a towering figure in poetry of the American literary modernism. Ezra Pound was one who developed the literary style of imagism in poetry. Imagism was a subgenre of modernism concerned with creating clear imagery with sharp language. The essential idea was to recreate the physical experience of an object through words. As with all modernism, imagism implicitly rejected Victorian poetry, which tended toward narrative. In this way, images poetry is similar to the Japanese haiku. They are brief renderings of some sort of poetic scenes. In a station of the metro is probably the most famous images poem of Ezra Pound, which goes, the apparition of these faces in the crowd, petals on a wet, black bowl. So in just two lines, Pound seeks to capture the fleeting impression of seeing a crowd of people at the Paris Metro and puts into practice some of his key images principle. The speaker in a station at the Paris Metro underground system observes the faces of the crowds of people are like the petals hanging on the wet black bow or branch of a tree. The poem stays in the memory partly because of the frailty of the image which is being suggested. Petals on a bow or branch will not be there forever just as the faces in the metro a hundred years from now will not belong to the same people. So that is Ezra Pound's imagism in poetry, which gave modernism its first start and is considered to be the first organized American modernist literary movement. The Harlem Renaissance is another literary movement which happened around the 20th century, particularly the 1920s. Following the Great Migration, Black American writers, poets, artists, and intellectuals formed a community in New York's Harlem neighborhood. A new style of lyrical and innovative literature flourish, offering a thorough examination and celebration of Black American life. Many famous authors such as Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston found their voice in this movement. 
another American literary movement of the 20th century occurring around World War II was the Lost Generation. It was a disillusionment with the American dream characterized the work of Ernest Hemingway and other writers such as F. Scott Fitzgerald, Ezra Pound, and Gertrude Stein. The novel The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald reveals the American dream is an, an attainable illusion and the materialism led to the corruption of the American dream in the Roaring Twenties. The characters Gatsby, Daisy, and Myrtle all have failed to achieve their dreams in the book and destroyed by the American dream. And then we have the contemporary period of American literature, or the post-World War II period. It is essentially the re-emergence of realism brought about by the horrors of World War II. Literary movement called minimalism emerged as well during the contemporary period of American literature. Writers like Ernest Hemingway and Samuel Beckett told stories with simple plots full of matter-of-fact observation, both of which would become a hallmark of literary minimalism. It is also characterized with emotional distance of the writers from their subjects. Minimalist fiction thrived, and by 1970s, it made its way into the mainstream literature. At the turn of the 21st century in American literature, relationships and connections between people and emotion provoking storytelling has become common. The value of media in culture is changing the way American literature is perceived. American literary works has also conveyed themes of diversity and acceptance. Universal themes were also explored through the eyes of American culture. Various American literary works also employed contrasts of the ordinary with magical elements, and fantastic elements are interwoven into realistic fiction or essentially the trend of speculative fiction, which was discussed already in our previous module. That ends the last of the seven-part series of virtual learning on 21st century literary traditions and forms from different cultures. Bye for now, mga kaheaven!